Hey, this is Mr. McScrody from YouTube. Um, I figured I'd do a bit of an update on how I do things now, uh, seeing as I haven't posted it in a couple of years and have grown up mentally um, since then, oh, and, and physically too, but mostly mentally, and I've gained a bit more knowledge on how to do this stuff. Um, I'm still quite ignorant on how to do things, so my quality isn't necessarily up there where it should be, but... Either way, I'll stop the babbling. I use Line 6 uh, UX1 with Pop Farm 2.0, uh, Easy Mix 2, and Tune Tracks Easy Drummer. So yeah, I I first started out using five tracks. Uh, um, one for bass drum, one for snare, one for toms, one for uh, crash, which includes like China. Um, and then hats, which includes splashes and ride. Um, and so all together, the drums sound like this. Oh yeah. And, um, this is all with a master on it. So it may sound a bit different than what you hear when the guitars and bass are, are plugged in. So that's all that. Um, I use Easy Drummer for all of these tracks, which uses a lot more memory than it than uh, it could be, because I'm pretty sure there's an easier way to do it. I don't necessarily um, care, to be honest. I mean, if it helps, uh, post in the comments and then let me know what I'm doing wrong. But I'm I've I've never really tried to find a, a way that uses less memory, even though I think I know of a way that would. Um, but yeah, either way, uh, enough of the rambling. Um, boom, I use uh, Easy Mix 2 presets for the bass drum and snare. I use the Kick Metal 3 preset and the Metal Snare Top for the snare, obviously. That makes most sense. Um, and then I use Sub Kick 4 for um, toms. And then I EQ everything obviously to make it sound the best with the track uh this is all my perspective of it i don't i'm not a classically trained producer obviously um uh i don't really know how to do things uh the way that um uh, someone who has a sound engineer job would which i think is fair seeing as i'm just i'm learning through ig ignorance is is what i'm trying to say i'll cut all the bs out um so yeah um and I and I program everything click by click, so which can be tedious, but it, it works out because I don't own a drummer or a, or a drum set, rather, um, and uh, I don't know how to play drums, and I I I I've learned through Tune Track or uh, Easy Drummer, sorry, so I'm doing it out of what sounds best to me, as opposed to how someone would be able to play this, so I use a lot of ghost notes that was a seamless transition i use a lot of ghost notes um just to fill holes um essentially or to contrast groovy parts where the snare is as in like right here just doing one thing um and i'll get you to listen to it just to contrast and i'll i'll, I'll actually uh play the toms and all the symbols with it so you can get a contrast of what everything is doing So the second time the ghost notes roll around over here, it, it's actually mimicking the guitar riff. So I don't even know if you can hear it. I haven't really listened to this song much because I recorded it a couple months ago and I haven't touched it since until here. Um, but I don't know if it's noticeable. I, I, I don't even really know if it fills up any holes or not. So I guess that's just pointless. A anyway, so yeah, uh, that's why I use ghost notes essentially. Um, so that's all, all the drum stuff, basically. Um, I guess I'll give you a bit of a listen to other parts. Um, so for this part, this part has two parts. It's the same part that you just heard. It's, uh, this. And 
And then the second part, the drums change, uh, but the guitars stay the same. And um, I'm pretty sure this is a ripoff of a Meshuggah song. I'm not completely sure, but I'm pretty sure the drum pattern is. So, fuck. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's just oh, and I guess I'll get you to listen to the the chorus part or whatever, just so you can hear. I think the ghost notes are a bit more um, audible during this part. So here you go. <laughs> Yeah, and then it goes back into the intro. So that's all the drum part. And then for bass, I use Easy Mix. I don't even know if I've talked about this. I, I have such a bad memory. Um, and someone f- called me during the last time that I tried to do this, so I had to start all over again. Um, for bass, I use Easy Mix 2 uh, with a bit of EQ, and I use the plucked metal uh, plucked bass combo. Uh, sometimes I use different ones, but this one called for this one. And then I remove all, most of the mids from it. And then I generally don't use low pass on bass. But I figured that I would do it for this one. And I'll let you listen to it dry. Then I'll let you listen to it wet. Yeah, so it's it's pretty much just, just bass. Um, then I also do like a fuzzy bass thing for this part which mimics the Meshuggah ripoff thing that I was talking about earlier. And that's going on while the other bass thing is happening. So it's and um, I should have just recorded them both dry and then uh, played it over. But I didn't, I didn't want to get too into it, I guess. I don't honestly know. Then... Um, for guitars, I gen- I don't know why I hit record. I uh, generally do the same thing for both ears to make it consistent. Uh, so they should be the same. Um, EQ, that. Mids a bit boosted. I, I usually boost the mids a bit more, which I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Then I'll try and make it sound thinner by like dropping it off at the ends, like over here and over here. Um, and then low pass. 7,000. I, I I go back and forth with low pass. Sometimes I use it sparingly, and sometimes I use 7,000. So, who knows? And then overall, after all that's done, and I get, like, a fair mix on it, like, just making sure that nothing's too loud and all that. Not not a good mix by any means, just how I think it should sound. Um, I slap a master on it. Uh... This one, I used Master 1. I used to use the Maxi one, but I found that it enhanced bass frequencies too much, and I didn't really want to screw with everything after I already quote-unquote mixed it. So, yeah. Um, Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's everything. If if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I think I'd be able to help a bit more than I would be with the last video because i've gained a bit of knowledge um and if not i'll just let you know that i i can't help you and i'm i don't have the brain capacity to do so um and then oh yeah and uh i I was thinking about doing a video of me making a song like click for click and all that obviously i would time lapse it and then put the uh, finished product of the song over it so it'd be hopefully less boring but I don't want to do it if no one's interested in watching. So if you would be interested in watching, just let me know in the comments and I will uh, do it as soon as I can, really. Um, I don't work too often, so I should be able to squeeze it in. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions, just put it in the comments. If you do want to see that video, um, post that in in the comments too. And if you're interested in seeing more videos from me, I don't necessarily think I'm going to be doing a, l- a lot of these like boring talk videos, which isn't boring to me because I'm very selfish and I care about no one but myself. So this works out for me. But um, if you're I- interested in seeing more sound clip videos, which I've been posting more lately, um, I guess maybe subscribe to me if you're into it or just re- remember my name. Um, 
And I think that's everything. Yeah, just subscribe, like if you feel like it. Um, yeah, have a good day, and hopefully this was informative at all. I, I didn't get too much into EQ. If you guys would like that, I I could. Um, it, it's obviously uh, from my perspective on how things sound, so it may not even help, even if you guys want it, but I, I, I would do it once I have free time. Um, yeah, have a good day, and YOLO. YOLO.